in keeping with my plan of covering the walking on eggshell society we live in, I thought it'd be pertinent to bring to everyone's attention this rather interesting phenomenon of anti-catcalling signs being posted both in New York and the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Now, this is not a major, major event, and this actually took place in, in April, to the best of my knowledge. But let me just give you a, a gist of what's going on. I'll read off a bit of the article, and I will offer commentary. Attention catcallers. The streets of New York City do not welcome you. A new campaign hopes to raise awareness about the prevalence of catcalling, which some international studies show between 70 to 99 percent of women face at some point in their lives. New street signs have been posted around New York City by the non-profit Feminist Apparel in conjunction with the Anti-Street Harassment Week. So, to give you an idea of what's going on there, now let's first look at the language they're using. This is, of course, the, the Huffington, Muffington, Schmuffington Post, whatever. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which some international studies show between 70 to 99 percent of women face. Well, you know, the first problem is words and terminology. Uh, even people, monolingual speakers who have no knowledge of formal language, words carry meaning. To face something in, in English, in the conventional sense, is to imply that there is a, a, a serious problem. Uh, you don't, for example, talk about, uh, oh, I have to go get groceries and it's such a fucking schlep to head down there, I'm going to have to lug them back, I have to face getting the groceries. It, it, this is, you talk about facing cancer, you talk about facing an operation, you talk about facing a difficult adversary in, in, uh, in the combat or, or a debate, you know, face implies challenge. What, of course, in the eyes or the minds of some of these women might be regarded as a, a challenge, right? 70 to 99 percent, <laughs> pardon me. Now, as you can see in the various pictures, they're basically everywhere. Now, one thing that comes to mind instantly is this. This is defacement of public property. Now, imagine if someone, and you can see the signs are bolted to the, to the sign posts. Though they've been screwed in. And this is both New York City and Philadelphia. Well, it's defacement public property. If you uh, took a spray paint can and graffitied up signs and and even if you were just to go up and down the the metal uh, pole itself this would be to face my public property apparently people don't care about this there's no way that this is legal but this does show us that we are living once again and then walking on eggshells <laughs> into eggshells so it's society i mean look at this nonsense <clears throat> Martoffel said that they're aiming to have at least one sign up in each of New York's five boroughs by the end of the week, and they're also going up in Philadelphia neighborhoods in partnership with feminist group Pussy Division. I have no clue what fucking Pussy Division is, but the problem here is that <laughs> the problem we face everywhere, society has become so safe, so absurdly, Un, unassumingly not dangerous to people in general and specifically above all to women that they need to make up stuff to to really get people's attention and I don't even know if they're actually serious about themselves or this is just an attention uh, gag remember when the anti-cat calling woman uh, posted that weird video of her as 10 hours of walking through New York City blah 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 of course, uh, this was an attention stunt, and I think this is as well, uh, posting the signs. This can't really be serious. Uh, although, if I were to click on the link between 70 to 99% of women face blah, 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 and there's a site now called Stop Street Harassment Statistics, Academic and Community Studies. Well, and they, they go through various uh, cities, Indianapolis, USA, in one of the first street harassment studies ever conducted, Carol Brooks Gardner, Associate Professor of Sociology and Women's Studies at Indiana University, Indianapolis, interviewed 293 women in Indianapolis, Indiana over several years in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The women were from every race, age, and class and sexual orientation category of the 
general population in Indiana in the United States, Gardner found that every single woman, 100%, could cite several examples of being harassed by unknown men in public, and all but nine of the women classifies those experiences as troublesome. So here we have an example of a professor of sociology, which in itself isn't bad, and women's studies, <coughs> red light, green light, no, more red light. We see that <laughs> he's just claiming... Uh, she found, Gardner just found, in air quotes, that every single woman was cited as troublesome, 100%. These aren't real data, gentlemen. This is just absurdity. This is more feminist absurdity. This is more publicity. This is, I don't know if I can take this seriously. On the other hand, the fact that manspreading is considered a real phenomenon, a, a problem, as they put it, well, maybe, maybe this is kind of serious on their part. How absurd do things need to become? How insane do things need to become, in, particularly in the United States, before people say enough is enough? I mean, this is defacement of public property, but uh, who cares, right? There have been instances, and Teal Deere did an excellent video on this, uh, where women who aren't catcalled to complain about being not catcalled. And it sort of reminds me of that that sort of fictional story that, or it wasn't a fictional story, the story that Gerard Swat had referenced in, in, in years bygone, many years ago, she said, it's kind of like that story of the women who got annoyed at the men in Italy for slapping and pinching their asses, and then in their 40s were ma ma angry at the, at the men for not saying anything and ignoring them. I mean, this is kind of what's going on. And I decided, of course, not to cover it, because other people had covered it, including Turtle Fling and Monkey, but... I mean, we're living in an age where air conditioning apparently is sexist, where the temperature of an office room is somehow in, hostile, in a hostile manner directed towards women. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to guess what's going to come next. What's going to come next after posting anti-catcalling signs, defacing public property, complaining about the temperature of rooms? Um, we have man-spreading, uh, never mind women taking up lots of space and seats with their bags. What else is going to... I, I mean, maybe I just lack the imagination, but I think it can get worse. Um, there might... I mean, what is catcalling? It's actually verbalizing things. What if looking at women um, becomes a crime? I mean, in some of these very sinister and dark um, dystopian fantasies and books that have been written in 1984, Brave New World, all these things that come from that genre... We, we experience bits and pieces of that kind of world, not entirely of the sort I'm talking about, but imagine a world, imagine going through New York City where not only is it against the law to look at women, to even look at them, but because of the subjective nature of what's regarded as looking at and being looked at, uh, you don't know where you are. You are quite literally walking on eggshells. You're dancing on one foot, to the next, back and forth, no idea. And so what do you do in those situations, or in that a theoretical situation? I imagine you walk forward with your eyes glued to the ground, to the sidewalk, to the pavement, and then you, what, you get run over? I mean, now, this seems ludicrous, but we're, in, we're a hair's breadth away from becoming this sort of society. Uh, regardless of whether women or not think cat whatever cat, cat calling is actually is is defined who knows um as i pointed out Gildir did a, an interesting video where he pointed out that women some women actually want to be cat called that because nobody ever does it and their little poor little egos are, are hurt as a consequence but we are heading in this direction uh office temperature not being now i don't the other question of course is how serious do these people take all this. I mean, are they taking it in, in a really serious manner? That remains to be seen. Uh, apparently, these signs have not been taken down, even their defacement of public property. Um, who knows how seriously the response has been uh, taken to the issue of office sexism regarding temperature or whatever the hell that was. But I'm just saying, all these are precedents, these walking on eggshells, where every little thing you do is perceived as a wrong or a slight against women, is moving towards a society where you're just going to have to look down at the ground, not say anything, don't talk to women. That's, that's probably before going to not looking at women, it's probably not talking to women. So if you say, 
excuse me, miss, and then all of a sudden you're arrested, <laughs> when you just want to say, excuse me, miss, do you have the time? Excuse me, miss, do you know where this particular doctor's office is located? Are you from here? I need to get to here. You're not allowed to say any of that. Can you imagine that kind of society? So we're heading in that direction where you can't even talk to women. And of course, the consequence of this will be women pitching and complaining even more because they'll be complaining about men uh, being afraid to talk to women as they already have, you know, the man-up complex. They've created a society, feminists and women, they, the women who have been complicit with feminism, and most, the vast majority have. They don't really speak out against it. They gladly accept the benefits. A society where being a male is increasingly becoming a, a crime, a crime of nature, and it's, it's getting worse and worse. And MGTOW, of course, is a natural response to that, but I think more and more blue pill men are just realizing how absurd this is. And they're not going to fight back. They're just going to fucking recline and withdraw into themselves. You know, what's going to happen when the world doesn't want to acknowledge the natural state of men anymore and the way we are? Imagine a particularly dark scenario, some worse version of the Yes Means Yes campaign, some municipal law passed in New York that says, well, you cannot talk to women unless they talk to you first. And then the next one, you cannot look at women unless they look at you first. Can you imagine what would happen? Now, let's just look at the courtship rules in general. When men are interested in women, when there's some sort of thing going on, men almost invariably are the ones that have to approach women. They have to initiate the conversation. They have to make the effort. They have to face the possibility of rejection. It's not women. But you have this weird theoretical law in place, say in New York City, and all of a sudden women are complaining that men aren't approaching them. The very law that women thought was such a good idea to, to pass and to impose on men is now becoming a double-edged sword. And you can't win. You can't win. You either acquiesce to it and they complain or you fight it, and they complain as well. And these are the kinds of things, and this is just hypothetical, it, it seems unlikely that some law is going to be passed, but don't talk to women unless they talk to you first. Although given the fact that there are, uh, there's defacement of property with no catcalling signs being posted in New York City, and a yes means yes can't, which is just absolutely absurd, and we, Barbara Rose has co covered this extensively, it doesn't seem that far off. Don't talk to unless being talked to yourself, and then men in brackets campaign. Can you imagine that? It's not that far off. And this is why men increasingly, not just MGTOW, all men want as little to do with women as possible. This is the very definition of walking on eggshells, where you cannot say anything, you cannot do anything, etc. And in some ways, the no catcalling signs are an indication of, you know, don't talk to me unless I'm talking to you. Don't look at me unless I'm looking at you. Women increasingly have shown some of their most odious sides to the world. The, and frankly speaking, to many men, women, women have become completely repellent. No, I'm not talking about homosexual. I'm talking about heterosexual men that find women attractive. And these men increasingly are able to completely overlook the physical beauty of women and look into their souls, as it were, metaphorically speaking, and all they see is absolute ugliness. Hideous, hideous, hideous composition of soul. And they want nothing to do with it. The fact is, even as it's feminists that are passing these things, women don't really have a problem with it. They just, the everyday woman just lets it pass. They don't speak out against it. They have no problem. And this is why, once again, men go in their own way, exist. I mean, there are a host of other reasons why uh, MGTOW exists, but increasingly, your everyday man who is neither going his own way nor anything else, your blue pill guy, you know, beer buddies and Xbox, they just they don't even want to hook up anymore because it's too much fucking effort, it's too much work, it's too dangerous, and it's just insane. This is the very definition of a walking and eggshell society, and I want nothing to do with it, and... I guess it's a matter of time until it, it comes to Europe because uh, it's primarily going on in specifically English-speaking countries, specifically Canada and the United States, 
and to a lesser degree the UK. Now on a final note, to see just how far things have gone, uh, I met a, a subscriber of mine not too long ago who happens to be the CEO of a, of a kind of startup gaming company somewhere in between India and AAA. And what he taught, uh, told me was very revealing. The, the level of infiltration feminism and feminists have, have garnered in the gaming industry to the point where publishers are terrified to talk to you as a game developer if you don't count out to the feminist imperative, if you don't include, you know, X, Y, Z. He told me, and I don't know if this is a fact, I'm going off what he told me, that originally for Fallout 4, given the amount of work it required to implement a voice actor, it was only going to be a male. Now, it is true that Bethesda games have a tradition of, you know, every race possible in, in Elder Scrolls and Fallout, of course, um, male and female, but given the work of voice acting, you know, Feminists in an uproar said, no, you can't do that. Now, personally, I would like to have seen, and I'm looking forward to having the option of playing either a male or female, personally. But the fact that feminists, or rather the possible fact, this is what he told me, had put pressure on Bethesda and told them they need to do this rather than trying to support the, the actual gaming community, as Bethesda always, usually does, is insane. And if a game doesn't kowtow to the fem feminist imperative, then publishers are afraid to speak to you, apparently. So we are, we are walking on eggshells now, and this can get worse and worse. The thing I just talked about, this, you know, don't talk until you're talked to first uh, law, this sounds like a fantasy, but it's a fantasy that is very close to reality, and very, very soon it could take on the proportions of reality. Now, this was a bit of a rant, but one that was necessary, I feel. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.